And the love made Clifford grow so big That the Howards had to leave their home Clifford's the best friend anyone could know He's the greatest dog ever I really think so Clifford's so loyal He's there when you call I love Clifford, the big red dog So they packed up the family car And the Howards left the city They moved to Birdwell Island and their many new friends There to greet Clifford and Emily Clifford's so much fun, he's a friend to us all I love Clifford, the big red dog <laughs> Ooh. supposed to be the best doggy school teacher around. Of course she's the best. I wouldn't be bringing Machiavelli to her if she weren't. Clifford was so excited he could hardly sleep last night. T-Bone didn't sleep too well either. I think he's a little worried about how well he's gonna do in class. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't worry, buddy. You're gonna do just fine. Here comes Brittany. All right, folks, time to say goodbye to your dogs. Doggy school will be starting in just a few moments. Cleo, my baby, be a good little girl and give mommy a goodbye kiss. My sweet girl. Have fun at school today, and I'll pick you up later, okay, Clifford? Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it's really not fair, putting a champion like you in this class. But try to have fun, Machiavelli. Try your best, buddy, and have fun. Okay, I'll try my best. Okay, pups, line up. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brittany's gonna like me. We have the same hair. I hope she likes me too. Who cares if she likes you? She just better have a lot of tummy yummy treats on hand or I'm not gonna do anything. All right, we'll start with a simple rollover. <laughs> well, you look eager to try it, Cleo. Let's see what you know. Wow, she's good. That was a little more than a simple rollover, Cleo. But you certainly are creative. <laughs> okay, now, how about you, Clifford? <laughs> Well, you certainly do make a big impression, Clifford. A very big impression. <laughs> Let's see what Machiavelli can do. Watch and learn, little friend. Watch and learn. Okay, Machiavelli. Roll over. Come on. Roll over. Come on, boy. You can do it. Come on. Roll over. <sighs> no treats, no tricks. All right. Like this, Mac. Come on. Try it. Woof, woof. Wow. She's really good. Hmm. Not very creative. Oh, come on, Mac. Try it. Please. For a treat? <gasps> Oh, 
Okay, Machiavelli. Good job. Works every time. Looks like it's T-Bone's turn. Fine, T-Bone. Just fine. <laughs> okay, break time, pups. Go play. <laughs> fine. Just fine. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? I'm very creative. She said I made a big impression. I don't think she likes me. She said you were fine, T-Bone. Yeah, maybe I'll do better tomorrow. Okay, pups. Yesterday was the first day of school and you all did very well. Now, we have a lot more work to do over the next week. And I want everyone to keep trying their best to learn new things, okay? <laughs> okay, then. Let's get started. Your turn, Clifford! Oof. Fetch! Whoa! Oh! Uh, excellent job, Clifford! Okay, Cleo, jump! Excellent! Uh -huh. huh? I love your enthusiasm, Cleo, but um, you can stop now. Did you hear that? She loves me! Yeah, I sure hope I can do that. Come on, Mac. You can do it. Come on, Mac. Let's go. <gasps> Whoa. Oh. Ha! That's the fastest I've ever seen that trick done. <laughs> Brittany really likes Mac. She's always giving him treats. T-Bone? <gasps> You're next. Okay, steady now. I can do this. I can do this. Yes, I did it! That was fun. That was just fine, T-Bone. Fine? Fine? Well, pups, it's been a really great week. You've all been just wonderful, and you should be very proud on graduation day tomorrow. <gasps> graduation? I'll see you all back here tomorrow for the big graduation ceremony. <gasps> woof, woof! <laughs> I hope I get a great big graduation trophy. I hope my whole family can be here. I hope they serve lots of food. I just hope I graduate. <clears throat> I want to say that I am very proud of each and every one of the dogs in my class. They are all special in their own way. Today, I'd like to honor each one of them. First, an award for enthusiasm to Cleo. <laughs> I wonder what kind of award they'll have for you, buddy. For the biggest impression, <laughs> this award goes to Clifford. That's my Clifford. And an award for the best tricks for treats goes to 
Machiavelli! Come on, Mac. Come on, boy. I've got a tummy yummy for you. Thank you. I always knew my Machiavelli was the best behaved dog on the island. <laughs> Come on, Mac. Let's go. Mac! You're next, buddy. <laughs> this award goes to a hard-working, always tries his best, absolutely delightful student, <laughs> T-Bone. <laughs> She said. Congratulations. You have a very fine dog, Sheriff Lewis. Yes, I do. A very fine dog. And congratulations to all my students. They were all wonderful, and I really enjoyed being their teacher. A luscious lunch. It was time to eat, so Speckle and his friends unpacked their lunches. Everyone had packed their favorite food. They all brought the same food almost every day. Then Speckle wondered, what if they took their favorite lunches and shared them to make something totally new? Everyone thought that sounded like fun. So Reba rolled her salad in Luna's tortillas to make very veggie burritos. Speckle layered his jelly sandwich with Ravi's yogurt to make scrumptious striped pudding. Darnell and Luna combined their cheese and apples into fruity, cheesy chunks. The new creations were all so yummy, the friends decided to try new things more often and share them with each other. was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs> Islander of the Year. Father hugged his children, happy to have returned safely to them once more. That was a great story, Miss Lee. I'm glad you like it, Emily. Now, before you leave, I want to remind you all that it's time for our annual Birdwell Islander of the Year essay contest. Cool! I definitely want to enter. All you need to do is write a short paper about the person you think does the most to help people on Birdwell Island. Is there a prize? No, but the winner's picture will be added to the Birdwell Islander of the Year Wall of Fame. Cool. And the winning essay will be published in our newspaper, The Birdwell Beacon. Looks like Clifford wants to enter too. <laughs> <laughs> Birdwell Islander of the Year. I wonder who it will be. <laughs> Thanks, Clifford. I don't deserve the award this year, but maybe someday in the future. It's 
gonna be hard to decide who to write about. I know. There's a lot of great people on the island. I'm gonna get started right now. After all, we've only got a week. Charlie, tell me, who did you write about? Uh-uh, I'm not telling. You'll have to wait to hear my essay. Welcome, everyone, to our Birdwell Islander of the Year essay contest. First up to read her paper is Emily Elizabeth Howard. Oh, I didn't think I'd have to go first. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, Clifford. I'll be fine. for Birdwell Islander of the Year is Birdwell's veterinarian, Dr. Din. Because she likes helping animals. And last summer, when a young whale washed ashore, Dr. Din nursed her back to health. Then Clifford helped her take the whale back to the ocean when she was feeling better. Okay, Clifford. Slowly, steady. Thanks, Clifford. Now she can go back to her family. Dr. Din takes good care of all the animals on the island. And that's why I think she should be Birdwell Islander of the Year. Thank you. <clears throat> For Birdwell Islander of the Year, my choice is Sheriff Lewis. Sheriff Lewis helps people and keeps Birdwell Island safe. He is the coach of our soccer team. He makes practice fun and even got us mascots. Let's hit the field! Get out there and have a good practice. Uh, but coach, how can we practice? There's no goalposts. Yeah. Hmm. Well, looks like we'll just have to make our own. Yeah! <laughs> Way to hustle. Nice teamwork. Great job, Clifford. Thanks. Ow, ow, ow. Because he teaches us to be good citizens and good sports, I think Sheriff Lewis should be Birdwell Islander of the Year. Uh, thank you. Gee, Charlie, Sheriff Lewis is a good choice, too. Oh. Oh. Clifford thinks so, too. To be chosen the Birdwell Islander of the Year is a very special honor and should go to an outstanding person who regular people can look up to. That's why I think Birdwell Islander of the Year should be me, Jenna Handover. I'm sure you all remember the time a kitten was stuck in a tree in the park and I saved it all by myself. Why, what is the matter, Mr. Carson? My poor little kitten is stuck in a tree and is too scared to come down. Have no fear, I shall save her. <gasps> Would you? Oh, you're so kind. Using Emily Elizabeth's big old dog. Excuse me, Jetta, but I thought you said you did this by yourself. Oh, uh, uh I did, Miss Lee. <coughs> Except for Clifford. <gasps> oh, and, um, <clears throat> Emily Elizabeth was there too. Emily? Well, I remember Clifford and I were in the park, but anyway, there I was, the kitten's only hope. And overlooking the fact that I might ruin my new sweater, I convinced Clifford to take me to the helpless kitten.
You're a sweet girl, Jetta. How can I ever thank you? No need for thanks. It was just what any outstanding Birdwell Islander would do. For that, and other reasons too numerous to mention, I, Jetta Handover, would make an excellent Birdwell Islander of the Year. <laughs> the end. <gasps> Thank you, Jetta, for that interesting interpretation. Now I remember that day. Actually, I think the way it happened was that Clifford saw the kitten first <laughs> and then helped Jetta reach it. Chief Campbell is the logical choice for Birdwell Islander of the Year. He teaches us about fire safety. Once he took us for a ride on the fire engine. Oh. I got to ring the bell. But most important of all, this year he saved the Birdwell Island Museum. Okay, everyone, stand back. Keep a safe distance. Here comes the fire truck! <gasps> oh my gosh! The fire truck has a flat tire! But Fire Chief Campbell needs the ladder. He won't be able to reach the fire without it. Oh, maybe he doesn't need a ladder after all, Vaz. Save the Birdwell Island Museum. Thank you, Vaz. Mr. Vasquez was our final entrant. But before I announce the winner, I'd like to thank all of the children for their hard work. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There were a lot of wonderful nominees. But our winner is someone who was not nominated. How does that mean? Yeah. What does she mean? This year's Birdwell Islander of the Year is someone who clearly helped everyone to be better islanders. Clifford, the big red dog. Suppose he does deserve it, even if he is just a dog. And since everyone's essays included Clifford, they will all be published in the Birdwell Beacon. Congratulations to you all! Clifford showed us that it's not just helping in an emergency that makes someone great. It's helping people every day in all sorts of ways that can make a difference. A really big difference. Thanks, Clifford. Hmm. Clifford and I know that it's important to always tell the truth. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is be truthful. I love my new bird bath. Cleo, where are you? Whoa! Oh, no. I broke it. <gasps> what happened? Uh, I don't know. Clifford did it! Clifford, you broke my bird bath. Huh? No, I didn't. Yes, you did. T-Bone said so. He didn't break it, Cleo. I did. It was an accident. I'm really sorry. How can I trust you if you lie to me, T-Bone? You made me yell at Clifford, and he didn't even do anything. I'm sorry. From now on, I'm going to tell the truth right from the start. Sometimes it's really hard, but telling the truth is always the right thing to do. 
That's why Clifford's big idea for today is be truthful. isn't ready for jumping yet. Listen, you know how crunchy they are? Yeah, so? When this pile is finished and I jump into it, it's gonna make the biggest, crunchiest sound in the whole entire world. Wow. Yeah. Mmm. Can I jump in your pile too, T-Bone? Sure, when it's done, but I need a bunch more leaves first. I'll help you find some. Thanks, Clifford. Look for the brownest, crunchiest ones you can find. Mm, mm. I'll help, too. Perfect! the perfect way to spend a Saturday morning. Oh my gosh, is it Saturday morning? Yep, it is. I almost forgot. Sheriff Lewis and I are gonna play some fetch together this morning. I gotta go. What about your leaves? Oh yeah. I'll watch them till you get back, T-Bone. You will? I won't let anything happen to them. Really? You promise? I promise. You're the best, Clifford. I'll be back soon. Bye, see you later. You know, T-Bone's right. This is a great pile of leaves, all crunchy and stuff. Yeah, I can't wait to jump in and hear them crackling. Yeah, me too. Clifford, you're not thinking of jumping in those leaves right now, are you? So great to hear them. Yeah, it would. And we could always make another pile. Yeah, we could. 
So we should go ahead and jump in. Yeah, we should. Wait a minute. Didn't you promise T-Bone you'd take care of this pile of leaves for him, Clifford? Yeah, you're right. So I guess we better not jump in them. But I can't resist. Wait, big guy! It was fantastic. Huh? Hey! Come back here! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop! Come back! Whoa, whoa. What's going on? Those are T-Bone's leaves! Stop! Oh, no! T-Bone's leaves are gone! Not all of them. <laughs> Oh, Cleo, why did I have to jump on the pile? Don't worry, Clifford. We can just make another pile. No, we can't. I promised T-Bone I'd take care of this pile. I promised. Well, yeah. But those leaves are all over the island by now. You can't get them back. I can try. What? I have to, Cleo. A promise is a promise. But Clifford... Come on, before they blow any farther away. <sighs> Sometimes it's hard being such a great friend. That's the last leaf, Cleo. We did it, big guy. Oops. Well, there it goes. Oh my gosh, it's getting away. I can't just let it get away. Oh, Clifford, be careful! Got it! You did it! <gasps> Clifford. Clifford, don't! <laughs> Shake. Well, Clifford, you did it. You got back every single leaf. Couldn't have done it without you. We're a good team. Look at them. I bet they're going to sound so crunchy. Oh, they sure are. 
Wouldn't you just love to take one tiny practice jump? Yeah, I would. But we're not going to. Just one teeny tiny little jump. You couldn't do anything, teeny tiny. It would be teeny tiny, I promise. Remember what happened last time you made a promise? Yeah, I guess I should only make a promise if it's one I can keep. Okay, no jumping. Nothing's going to happen to T-Bone's leaves. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right here. T-Bone, how's your game of fetch with Sheriff Lewis? Great. Clifford and I had a pretty good game of uh, fetch, too. That is, when we weren't watching your leaves. <laughs> I knew Clifford would take good care of them. He promised. Thanks, Clifford. You're welcome, T-Bone. And look, that wind knocked down a million more brown leaves. Why don't we sweep them all into one big monster crunchy pile? You wanna? Yeah. Sure. My pile of leaves is gonna be the biggest, loudest, crunchiest pile of leaves any dog has ever, ever seen! This is gonna crunch from here to the moon! It sure is! And Clifford, how'd you like to be the first one to jump in? You mean it? Of course! Okay, Clifford! You ready? One, two, Let's pile them up and do it again. <laughs> yeah, it'll be great. I promise. And the lost bunny. One day, even though she was always very careful, Luna lost her favorite stuffed bunny. Her friends helped her look high and low, but the bunny was nowhere to be found. Knowing that Luna would miss her bunny, Speckle suggested that they make her a new one. And everyone was inspired with their own ideas. Reba went into the forest and made a bunny with pine cones and ferns. Darnell went to the creek and made a bunny of stones and shells. In the meadow, Ravi made a sweet-smelling flower bunny. And Speckle took some hay and cloth and made Luna a soft straw bunny. When they surprised Luna with her new bunnies, she had a happy surprise of her own. She had found her old bunny. And now she was even happier, because now her friends had bunnies of their own. And so they played and pretended for the rest of the afternoon, each enjoying their one-of-a-kind bunny. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs>
will be Silly Sports Day here at school. Oh, oh that was so much fun. fun! What's Silly Sports Day, Miss Carrington? Well, Vaz, it's kind of like the Olympics, but instead of serious sports, we do silly stuff. Last year, I did the cream pie long jump. I jumped as far as I could and do a huge whipped cream pie. And I did the mile-long bike race on a little tricycle. Sounds like fun! That's what it's all about, Vaz, having fun. So everyone, please pick an event from the hat. The field will be set up this weekend, so you can practice if you'd like. But remember, this isn't something to win at. It's a day to have fun. I got the feather pillow toss. What did you get, Charlie? Jiggly juggling. You'll be great at that. You're good at everything. Great. I got that messy old cream pie long jump. It is messy. Last year, I got so covered in whipped cream, they put my picture in the paper. The newspaper? Uh-huh. Want to trade? Oh, uh, no thanks, Emily Elizabeth. The cream pie long jump sounds perfect for me. Juggling three squishy jigglies will be way too easy. I think I'll try juggling six. Six? Wow. If anyone can do it, you can, Charlie. Clifford, want to help me practice my pillow tossing tomorrow, boy? Let's meet here tomorrow morning and practice together. Great! See you then. Wow! Are you planning to eat all of that wiggly gelatin? This is for Silly Sports Day, Dad. I'm going to be a jiggly juggler. <laughs> You'll be good at that. Sorry, I'll clean it up. That's okay, but from now on, maybe you should practice outside. Huh? Right. better than this. Wow! Look at it go! Uh, Clifford, were you helping me? Mm -hmm. You're a good friend, Clifford, and I appreciate your help. But you blowing on the pillow isn't fair. I need to do it myself. It's okay for now, but you can't do it on Silly Sports Day, okay? Woof, woof. <laughs> hey, everybody, look! Charlie's gonna jiggly juggle! This is gonna be good! Okay, here goes nothing. That's one. It's a cinch. Okay, here comes three. <laughs> okay, I'll get it. Thank you. 
shower. Gee, what's the matter with Charlie? I guess juggling's harder than he thought it would be. I can't wait for silly sports day, especially your event. <laughs> Jiggly juggly. I decided I'm not going to do it. Oh? Juggling's too hard. Yeah, it is kind of hard. Huh? I never could quite do it myself. Ooh. <laughs> you look silly, Dad. <laughs> it's fun just to be silly sometimes. Yeah, but I told everyone I was going to be so good at juggling that I'd juggle six jiggly bags. Even if you're not good at it, Charlie, it's still fun to try new things, huh? Even when you miss. <laughs> Don't be afraid to try, son. Just do your best and enjoy yourself. Okay, Dad. Thanks. to juggle again. Never! Oh. I can't, Clifford. I'm no good at this. Mm. Okay, okay. I'll try it again. It is kind of fun, I guess. Wow! Four bags! Look at me! This is fun. Hmm. Oh, brother. Okay, okay. I'll do it. Ruff, ruff, ruff. All right, Charlie. Charlie. Oh, wow. so and now I'll try four jiggly juggling bags. Oh, 
Sorry, Cleo. It's just that I buried a bone here yesterday and now I can't find it. Can I help? Sure. Thanks. Hey, guys, what you doing? I'm looking for a bone I buried. And I'm helping. Let me help, too. Found it. You did find it. You're the best friends a dog could ever have. When you help someone, you really make them feel good. And you make yourself feel pretty good, too. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is help others. Kibble always has the best toys. <laughs> Whoa! I guess he didn't see this toy he dropped. <laughs> Cleo, that's the fifth time you found me so fast. As I always say, it's a gift. Hi, T-Bone. Hey, guys. Where'd you get the great toy? I, uh, found it. On the street. I wonder whom it belongs to. It belongs to T-Bone now. You know the rule. Finders, keepers, losers, weepers. Yeah, that's fair. Right? Well... It doesn't seem fair if you're the one who lost it. Yeah. So, you guys want to play with it? Yeah! <laughs> Woo! This is fun! Great toy, T! You know, this toy looks a lot like the ones Mr. Kibble sells in his shop. No, it doesn't. 
Yes, it does. Uh, I've got to go home, guys. I, I think it's getting dark out. No, it isn't. Mm, yes, it is. What's wrong, Tebow? Nothing. I just got to go home now. Bye. Okay, bye, T. See you tomorrow. Don't forget to bring your new toy. Give your brother his ball back. You know it doesn't belong to you. <laughs> Boom. I sure hope someone finds my bike and returns it, Dad. Hey, T-Bone. Supper time. It's your favorite. Beef bit stew. <laughs> yeah, you're the best dog in the world. Enjoy, buddy. you be me when I'm me. I'm that part of you that helps you decide what's the right thing to do. But you haven't been listening to me lately. Oh, um, yeah. My stomach hurts. Come on, I want to show you something. Whoa, where are we? We're in the past. Back when you were just a puppy. Look. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. That's me again. Yep, as a pup a couple of years back. Cute little guy, aren't you? And you loved playing with that toy. Oh, yeah, the wiggly rope. Oh, I love the wiggly rope. Sheriff Lewis and I play with that rope together all the time. Come on, T-Bone, time for lunch. <laughs> it was the best toy in the whole wide world. Remember what happened to it? I remember. my toy. Do you want to play with it with me? Sorry, pup. It's our toy now. You know the rule. Find us, keep us, lose us, weep us. <gasps> remember how it made you feel? Yes, I remember. <gasps> that was my favorite toy. And it felt awful when I didn't have it anymore. I don't think Mr. Kibble will feel so bad about the hedgehog toy, though. After all, he has lots of other toys. He probably won't even miss it. Don't think Mr. Kibble will feel bad about his toy, huh? Uh, no. 
Why don't we go to this shop and see for ourselves? Whoa! We're almost there. Whoa! I know I ordered a hedgehog toy. Where could it be? Oh. I'm sorry, Harriet. I know you really wanted that toy, but I just can't find it. I must have lost it or something. Oh. Okay, okay. I'll look some more. Harriet really wanted a hedgehog toy today. But now, Mr. Kibble can't find it. Because I found it. Yep. I know, I know. I guess Mr. Kibble really will miss his hedgehog toy. Oh, oh, oh. oh, I was just dreaming, but now I know the right thing to do. First thing in the morning, I'm taking you home to Mr. Kibble. Now, come on, let's go to sleep. Oh, hello. I've decided to give the toy back to Mr. Kibble. I know. I just wanted to tell you how proud I am of you for making that decision. It's the right thing to do. Yep, it is. Now, let's get some sleep. Hiya, Clifford. Hey, Cleo. Grab your new toy and let's go play. No, I can't. I've got to give it back to Mr. Kibble. It belongs to him. It belongs to Mr. Kibble? That's right. I knew it was his, but I really wanted it. So you just took it? Yeah, but that isn't right. So I'm going to give it back to him. Want to go with me? Sure. We'll go with you, T-Bone. Yeah, sure we will. Okay, then. Let's go. Well, good morning, everyone. Well, what have we here? Is that one of my hedgehog toys? You're such a good boy. Thank you, T-Bone. Thanks for returning it. You did the right thing. Good boy. afternoon, Speckle's friends asked him to play ball. Speckle said he'd love to, but first he had to clean the yard. It looked like a lot of work. Speckle laughed. He didn't think it was work at all. Then he strapped two brushes to the bottom of his feet and skated his front walk clean. It looked like so much fun, everyone wanted to try. So Darnell and Luna skipped across the yard using their jump ropes to make leaves scatter into a pile. Robbie skateboarded along the fence with a paintbrush. Speckle pushed Reba on a swing, and she wiped the windows clean. Speckle and his friends made the work so much fun, before they knew it, the job was done. The end. That was a great story. Isn't reading fun? <laughs>
nobody was safe from the ghost of old Whiffy the Skunk Ghost. Wherever this old ghostly skunk went, a nasty stink was sure to follow him. And as the years passed, the ghost of old Whiffy began to grow. Till the eerie aberration was 20 feet tall. Whiffy could knock you out with one lift of his giant tail, releasing a yucky stink like you've never smelled before. <laughs> Whiffy? <laughs> it's just Clifford. <laughs> Looks like the dogs want to hear this story, too. Go ahead, Dad. Finish the story. So, people say that 20 feet high and full of the stinkiest stink you can imagine, the old skunk ghost continued to astound the people of Birdwell Island until one day, he just disappeared. <gasps> Some people think he went off to live in the woods of Birdwell Park. Wow! Do you think it's true? Do you think Whiffy's in the woods? <laughs> No, it's just a fun make-believe story. It's fun to hear stories, especially when you know they're not true. But story time is over now. Come on, Charlie, let's walk Emily Elizabeth home. Come on, guys, let's play in the woods. Uh, I don't think so, Cleo. You never know what might be in those woods. What do you mean? Oh, you mean Whiffy the Skunk Ghost. Uh, yeah, that's what we mean. Come on, you know there's no such thing as ghosts. Let's go! I guess she's right. Mm, uh, yeah! Come on! Come okay. in! Let's play tag! Not it! Okay, I'm it. You better run. <laughs> Whoa! Clifford, stop! What? What? Behind you! It's, it's Whiffy the Skunk Ghost! Ghost? <laughs> Yikes! It must be Whiffy! Run! Come on, Cleo! Let's get out of here! Where's Cleo? I don't know. Maybe Whiffy got her. We gotta go back and find her. Yikes! Oh no! It's Whiffy! Scare you guys? Cleo! We thought you were a ghost! You did? <laughs> That's funny. No, it's not funny. Oh, come on. It was just a little trick I was playing on you. It's not nice to play tricks like that, Cleo. Sorry. But you guys know that Whiffy's not real. Yeah, we know. But still... Come on, let's go swimming. Swimming? Okay. Come on, Clifford. Okay. Swimming's a lot more fun than playing tricks any day. <laughs> this is great, Clifford. Do some more. Hey, where's Cleo? She was just here. Cleo, where are you? Clifford, T-Bone, help! Whiffy the Skunk Ghost has got me! Whiffy the Skunk, skunk ghost? ghost? We're coming, Cleo! We're coming! <laughs> you tricked us again? <laughs> we were really worried about you, Cleo. That wasn't nice. It was just a joke. I don't be mad. I was just having fun. I don't like that kind of fun. 
I'm sorry. I won't do it again. Let's just play, okay? Okay, Cleo, but no more tricks. Yeah, no more tricks. Okay, okay. No more tricks. Eight, nine, ten. Ready or not, here I come. I'm gonna find you guys. Aha! I see you, T-Bone. Ah, oh, you found me. Yeah, now to find Cleo. <gasps> Did you hear that, T-Bone? Think she's trying to trick us again? Over here, behind the bush, quick! Let me see. <laughs> she is trying to trick us, T-Bone, and after she promised to stop. What should we do? Let's just start to leave. When she figures out she can't trick us anymore, she'll follow us and say she's sorry. Great idea, Clifford. <laughs> can't take it. <laughs> Ooh, help me! Whiffy's whiffing me with this stinky stink! Hurry! Hey, where are those guys? They should be trying to save me. Clifford? T-Bone? Uh-oh. They must have figured out I was trying to trick them again. I better go find them. Ow! Hey! Ow, 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 ow! Clifford! T-Bone! I really need you guys! Guys! I'm not kidding! That should be enough. There you go, guys! No, Mrs. Diller. I haven't seen Cleo at all today. Clifford and T-Bone are here, but Cleo isn't with them. Sounds like Cleo hasn't gone home yet. That's weird. You think she's still in the woods? I don't know. We better go look for her. Don't blame him for not coming. I've been a big stinker. If I ever get out of these woods, I'll never play tricks on them again. <gasps> Clifford? T-Bone? That is the real thing. Cleo! Cleo! Cleo, Cleo, where are you? I'm over here! <sighs> P.U., what is that smell? Ew, that must be Whiffy the Skunk Ghost. <gasps> and I bet you he's got Cleo. Let's go. <gasps> Are you okay, Cleo? Well, my bow got stuck in a bush, and then this real life skunk came and sprayed me with its stink. <sighs> That's an awful smell, Cleo. <laughs> I know. Real skunks can really stink you up. Let me unstick your bow, Cleo. Then you can go home and get a bath. <laughs> Thanks, big guy. We're sorry we left, Cleo. We, we thought you were trying to trick us again. <laughs> I was. I'm really sorry I played those tricks on you today. I promise I'll never do it again. Okay. Come on, Cleo, let's go home. Mrs. Diller will be happy to see you. But I bet she won't be happy to smell you. Poor Cleo. 
And Mr. Kibble's already given her four baths. Yeah, I don't think she'll be playing any more tricks on us, T-Bone. Nope, I don't think so. Don't worry, guys. I've learned my lesson the stinky way. It's important to try new things. That's how you learn. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is believe in yourself. Hiya, T-Bone. Want to play ball with Clifford and me? Sure. I get better at this game every time we play. Okay, then. Let's play. <clears throat> can I try that again? I know I can do it this time. Okay. Here it comes. I did it! <laughs> I hit it! I remember the first time we played, you couldn't hit the ball at all. I knew that if I just kept working at it and doing my best, I'd get better. So let's keep playing. Believing in yourself helps you to try your best and to keep on trying. That's why Clifford's big idea for today is believe in yourself. <laughs> 